I'm Matt Kyle. I am the Automotive Sales Manager for Sick US. I'd like to take some time and explain to you what we've been doing in quarantine for the past 60 some days besides growing our hair out. So we have taken our safety expertise that we've been doing for 74 years protecting people and taken technologies for track and trace solutions for supply chain visibility. And we've combined those to come up with a solution to safely reopen plants with Industry 4.0. So what we are going to do is we're going to introduce each one of those technologies. We're going to take LiDAR and we're going to take RFID and we're going to combine those together to be able to start providing data and solutions in areas where we need to understand some contact tracing in our facilities. Uh, we need to understand that areas have been cleaned and we need some real time decision making just in case we have to do any type of containment if there is uh, any contamination within the facilities. So without further ado, here is our team that's going to present to you uh, their favorite technology in this system and solution. And we look forward to being your partner as we reopen America. Enjoy. So of all the components in the system, I'm pretty sure the TIM is my favorite. And I'll tell you why. The TIM is a LiDAR device. And LiDAR is based off of a pretty simple concept called time of flight technology which really just uses a laser pulse bouncing off of a target to figure out how far away the target is. But when it started, LiDAR was actually a pretty complex concept because you'd have to work with all the data coming out of it, all of those measurements, to actually do something useful. But over the last 20 or 30 years that SICK has been working with LiDAR, we've managed to make it fairly simple to work with, to the point where now this is really just a sensor that detects the presence or the absence of an object. And you can configure whatever shape of a, a field you want to the TIM to look at. And in this situation, all we're really doing is we're mounting the TIM so that it's basically a configurable uh, infrared wall or invisible wall that if somebody breaks, we get an output. So as somebody wanders up and breaks that field, that gives us a trigger out of the outputs, which sets the whole system in motion. I'm pretty sure that's why the TIM is my favorite product in the system. For the track and trace component of the system, SICK utilizes UHF or ultra high frequency RFID readers. These UHF readers allow for the uh, identification of tags within a defined reading field. Uh, the benefits of UHF is the uh, capability of being able to really easily control and adjust the reading power of the antennas. So say you want to read 18 inches with some of our smaller readers or go all the way out to say 10 meters with some of our larger readers. And that reading field will be very well defined by uh, adjusting the power of the antenna itself. Some of the additional benefits to uh, uh, UHF is the capability to offer uh, filtering options. So uh, say you want to prevent any kind of overreaches from uh, other tags that might be outside of your reading field that you don't want to see. So filtering options are another way to make sure that your reading field is really well defined. Um, final benefit of being able to do some bulk reading applications. So uh, if you want to read one tag, two tags, or 100 tags in a reading field, uh, that can be done in an instant with the UHF readers. As you can see here with my quick little demo of the software here, as you see the tags within the field. As a further show, our RFID readers themselves are open with their reading gate right now in a free running mode. And I will have my assistant Teddy continue to show how uh, the UHF readers are able to identify the tag as uh, an object comes into my reading field. Teddy, come here. And thank you, you did such a good job. Uh, yeah, as you can see, the tags are identified, the LEDs are turning green, and we have a successful read application. Thank you. Okay, so here I'm gonna be demonstrating uh, our social distancing application. So here we have two TIMs and an RFU in the middle. Uh, so when someone walks into the zone, the TIM will trigger the RFU and then we'll read an RFID tag and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so now a user is in the zone. So it's gonna show on our dashboard. Occupancy turns green and the current user now has an ID. Now if I break the beam again, it triggers the RFU, 
but it doesn't read anything. So that means the user has left the zone. So we're going to see that reflect on the dashboard. The current user is going to go blank. Okay. So now I'm going to walk through. Okay, so now I'm in the zone. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger, and then I'm going to show it a second tag. And so this is simulating somebody else entering the zone. Okay, so now we should see an alarm on the dashboard. So we see a blinking yellow. We have the IDs for both users and as well as a timestamp. Thanks. Hi, my name is Tom Lodge. I'm the market application engineer for AppSpace here in the US. Uh, for this system, we'll be incorporating different devices connected all back to a single controller. For the trigger, we're going to be using multiple LiDAR-based TIM scanners connected over IO Link. Uh, for the RFID, we're going to use an RFU scanner connected over Ethernet. For visualization, we're going to use a product called the TDC, which allows sensor data to be transmitted and sent to a web-based dashboard for immediate feedback. Uh, the controller we're going to use is called a SIM 1012, and that will we'll tie everything together. What makes a SIM unique is that it allows various technologies to communicate through a single device while also utilizing the AppSpace programming environment. AppSpace allows users to rapidly develop applications on embedded devices with the functionality, flexibility of a full programming language. Thanks.